Hey y'all, today I want to show you a couple of workbooks that I have recently found for kiddos who are dealing with anxiety and excessive worry. Let's get into it. First of all, welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Kayla. I am a second generation homeschool mom. I'm currently homeschooling my fourth grader and my first grader. We are in our sixth year of homeschooling, and I generally share a lot of secular or faith-neutral resources and curricula on this channel. I also just like to chat parenthood and mama life, so if any of that sounds appealing to you, I hope that you'll consider subscribing and sticking around. Recently, I've been looking for more information and more tools that I can use as a mama of a child who deals with quite a bit of anxiety, worry, and excessive fears. I'm definitely not a mental health expert, and my child does not have a formal diagnosis, but this is something that I've just noticed us struggling with more and more as of late. And so I found myself doing a lot of research, reading, and of course trying to find some resources that might help, and I came across three different workbooks that I think are all really, really cool, and I wanted to share those with you guys. I will have all of these workbooks linked down below in the description box. I'd also love to start this conversation with y'all. If any of you have children who have anxiety or excessive worries and fears, if you found any books or websites or social media accounts or any activities or resources that our kiddos can use, please share them in the comments below. Hopefully we'll get a nice list of suggestions that we can all benefit from. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the camera around and show you guys these workbooks. Okay, so I have three workbooks here to show y'all. I picked up all three of these on Amazon. They're each a little bit different. The first one that I have here is just called The Worry Workbook, a kid's activity book for dealing with anxiety. This is by Imogen Harrison, and as far as I can tell, she is not a clinical psychologist or a mental health provider. She created this activity book, and she makes sure to mention on the back that this book has been peer-reviewed by a child psychologist who has left notes throughout the book just in case your child has questions. And it does tell us that the author, Imogen Harrison, has a passion for supporting children's mental health and well-being through play. However, I don't know what her particular credentials are, but it does look like she did put forth the effort to make sure that her activity book was backed up by real medical research and by an expert, so that's good with me. The ages that this book is recommended for are 7 to 12, so we'll look at this one in just a second. The next workbook that I have is called The Anxiety Workbook for Kids, Take Charge of Fears and Worries Using the Gift of Imagination. And it says this is an instant help book for parents and kids with 55 simple and fun activities. This book is written by a doctor, by a child psychologist, Robin Alter. And on the back, it does let us know that the activities in this book are based on CBT or cognitive behavioral therapy. They're looking to help kids develop skills like problem solving, assertiveness, positive thinking, body awareness, relaxation, and mindfulness. And then the last workbook that I have here is called What to Do When You Worry Too Much, A Kid's Guide to Overcoming Anxiety. This is also written by a doctor, Don Hebner. On the back here, we can see that this book is actually part of a series of books that are published from Imagination Press, which is founded by the American Psychological Association. And there's lots of different topics that are addressed in these books. Fairness, making mistakes, scary news, separation from parents or loved ones, bad habits, your temper, being shy. So that's pretty cool and I might check out more of these in the future. And I'm actually going to start by showing you guys this book first. I could not personally find an age bracket or age range that the book is designed for. However, just looking at it, it reads more like a picture book 
The font is a lot larger. So I feel like this could work really well for even a very young child, um, say early elementary age. So let's look at the table of contents here. We have an introduction here for parents and caregivers. And then after that, the book is split into nine chapters. I found this introduction to be very relatable. In this first paragraph, it describes parents finding themselves spending huge amounts of time reassuring, coaching, accommodating, and doing whatever else they can think of to minimize their child's distress but finding that that isn't enough. It doesn't really work. And it also talks about how anxiety has a way of growing and spreading, and it can be very resistant to just talking it out of existence. That's definitely been my experience. It kind of explains the general basis for the techniques that are shared in this book. Um, clinical psychology, cognitive behavioral therapy, so very similar to um, at least one of the other workbooks as far as what they're basing these exercises and techniques on. Right here it says if your child's anxiety is actually making you feel highly anxious, it might be best to consult a therapist to provide you or your child some additional guidance and support. After the introduction, we just jump right into our chapters. This whole book is illustrated, but all in black and white. So I feel like this is really geared towards either you reading aloud with your child, if your child's very young, or if you have sort of a middle to upper elementary age kiddo, they could easily read this book on their own. They start off with this illustration that's actually tied in throughout the book of growing worries. So they compare it to growing a tomato plant. And we actually see this illustrated really well on the cover of the book as well. So the idea is that plants need a lot of tending to for them to grow. And the same can be true with our worries. We can actually be tending to the worries or helping them to grow and get worse by our thoughts and our actions. So chapter one just kind of introduces this analogy of worries like a plant. Chapter two goes into what is a worry and how it makes you feel in your body. And then there's drawing activities throughout. So this says draw something that you worry about. Then chapter three, how do worries get started? So it talks about how sometimes we see something in the media that is scary and causes us to worry. Make a list of people you know who worry a lot. Maybe our kiddos are actually seeing excessive worry modeled for them by an adult in their life. Here's an activity where we can circle the words that describe how we feel when we're worried. And we can also put an X on the parts of our body where we feel that worry. Chapter four is making worries go away. And it introduces your kiddos to this idea of logic and how logic is really powerful and can actually take away some of our worry. Then it says, okay, well, what if we've used logic? We've worked out a plan. We've talked to our parents, but the worry stays in your mind. What can we do then? The next chapter is spending less time on worries. And it brings it back to the tomato plants here and says, when you're taking care of your worries, when you're thinking about them a lot and talking about them over and over again, you're actually helping your worries to grow just like the plant. And then it says, if you ignore a tomato plant by never giving it water and never checking on it, it will start to wilt and eventually it will die. And the same can go for worries. If we don't spend a lot of time on them, they will start to go away. I really like this suggestion where it talks about having a designated worry time and actually setting a timer for 15 minutes to sit and talk about our worries with mom or dad. And it says, this is important for us parents, that this time should be without interruptions. So there shouldn't be a TV on we shouldn't have our phones, and we shouldn't have any siblings in the room distracting us. This is our special time to just listen to our children, whatever their worries are, and help them to get that off of their mind. And then it encourages kids to not think or talk about worries until that designated time that we have set aside to talk with mom and dad about the worries. 
this is actually kind of stern. Um, this might not be gentle enough for some of us, but it actually suggests that mom and dad do not answer worry questions unless it is worry time. And it kind of gives you a script of how to handle this if you decide to go this route. And it even says, this might seem mean. You're going to feel worried. And your mom or dad will say, oops, that's a worry. Lock it up in your box. We can talk about that during worry time. It might feel hard to wait, but really it is for the best because talking about worries and answering worry questions over and over again when they come up is like sprinkling water on a tomato plant all through the day. It will actually make the worries grow like crazy. So this tip could work really well if you are feeling completely overwhelmed by how often your child is presenting fears, worries, anxious scenarios that they're thinking of and asking you for reassurance or wanting to sit and have these really long conversations to talk out these worries and fears Maybe this is going to be something that would be beneficial for you and for them. Have that designated conversation time that's focused with no distractions. And then all throughout the rest of the day, we say, we're going to save that for our worry time, for the time that we have set aside for those conversations. Chapter six is talking back to worries. So this chapter compares the worries and anxious thoughts to bullies and basically encourages kids to stand up to those thoughts. We have some illustrations here of some kind of scary, monster-looking worry blobs, and they encourage your child to draw what their worry bully looks like. Worry bully, that's kind of hard to say. This chapter is really empowering. It talks about how our thoughts sometimes will try to trick us, they will exaggerate and lie, Worry bullies want you to believe that the most terrible thing will definitely happen when really that terrible thing is very unlikely to happen. You can't trust a worry bully. They actually give kids words to say, and they could say this out loud or in their head, but they need to say it in a firm voice. And then there's some empty speech and thought bubbles here where your kiddo could come up with some other empowering things to tell their worry bully. Chapter seven is resetting your system. So this will be some relaxation and mindfulness exercises and activities that they can do to calm themselves down. And it gives them some signs to look for. If your heart starts to beat fast or your stomach starts to hurt and you know that you're not in danger, but it feels like you are, you might need to do some things to make your body calm down. So it has some physical exertion exercise, like running up and down the stairs four times, rolling up a sock and playing catch, hopping on your bike and going around the block. And then it also has some relaxation techniques. And it walks the kids through this in a way that's really clear and simple and easy to understand. So teaching them how to tense and relax their muscles, starting with their fists, their legs, then their face. We have some breathing exercises. And then here it compares their brain to a TV. And when they are not happy with what the TV is showing, they can change the channel. So this is kind of another visual for them, another analogy for them to understand pushing those anxious thoughts out of their minds actively. After that, we have an exercise on focusing on a special memory and trying to think about that when we're feeling anxious. So we have an illustration of a little girl who in her mind is really imagining and focusing on this happy moment of playing with her dog in the park and it talks about how this is a nice, quiet way of resetting your system, and it works pretty quickly. Chapter eight is keeping worries away. It talks about exercise, helping us to get rid of stress and tension. And it also talks about having a strong mind and focusing on our good attributes and our good qualities when a worry bully might be picking on us. The last chapter is You Can Do It. And this is just kind of a summary chapter. We have a list here of all of the techniques that we've learned along the way. And then our very last drawing activity is Draw Yourself Without Your Worries. 
So I feel like this book is really clearly written. I think even a very young child could understand this. I think that limiting conversations with our kids to that appointed designated time might be a challenge. And a lot of parents might feel like that's a little bit too harsh, not quite gentle enough. So just keep that in mind that that is an approach presented in this book. Okay, the next book that we're going to look at is The Anxiety Workbook for Kids by Dr. Robin Alter. Our table of contents has an introduction for parents. And then chapter one is all questions and answers. So what is anxiety? Why do we worry? How we deal with danger, fight, flight, freeze, and beyond? Who has fears and worries? And so on. Chapter two is getting to know more about me. Chapter three, getting to know more about fears and worries. So common fears and worries. What are my body clues? Chapter four is taking charge of my mind and body. So this is going to be the bulk of the exercises, the strategies that the book is teaching. Chapter five is taking charge of worries about real things. So this is problem solving and making step-by-step -step plans. Chapter six is taking charge of my imagination. And chapter seven is remembering and staying motivated. This book has a lot more information than the previous one we looked at. I feel like it's a lot more comprehensive and thorough. It is also completely in black and white, just like the first one. In the introduction to parents, it talks about how they wanted to provide answers to questions that children with anxiety typically ask. And while they're offering honest answers, they also wanted to keep it fun and non-threatening. We talk about how often children's anxieties are actually not based in reality. They're worried about things that are either impossible or extremely unlikely. And so with this book, they want to help kids understand the role that their imagination plays and how they can actually master their imagination and direct it where they want it to go rather than sort of letting it run wild. After that introduction, we get right into chapter one. Now, just based on the text and the layout of the book, I feel like this is geared towards a slightly older audience than the first book. I couldn't find an age range on or in the book. But I do feel like this book is geared more towards a parent and child sitting down and reading this together rather than the first book, which I feel like you could potentially have your child read that independently. I really like that this book covers our body's natural response to danger, fight, flight, freeze, and beyond. The first book doesn't really go into this. And I feel like this is really important information that I want my kids to be empowered with so that they know that these responses are part of being human, right? They explain real danger versus imagined danger. Here they talk about how humans might have benefited from the fight, flight, or freeze reactions if they were living in the wild and actually coming in contact with really dangerous animals or circumstances. I also really like that this book goes into detail that everyone has fears and worries. So our children should not feel alone in this. They shouldn't feel like they're the only ones dealing with this problem. Here the child has an opportunity to interview someone in their family or maybe a friend and ask them about fears and worries. It also says that some people who worry more have a really strong imagination and that's not necessarily a bad thing. There's a little quiz here to see if we have a really strong imagination. And then right away we're empowering kids. What is my imagination good for? How can my imagination help me? Can I become the boss of my imagination? This is all just in the first chapter. So it's really doing a very thorough job of introducing the contents that are going to be in the rest of the book. In chapter two, this is really focusing on getting to know ourselves. It's a pretty short chapter. Then we move into chapter three. We have a little word search for some things that kids are often afraid of. More drawing or writing prompts. 
We talk about our body clues, so how this might present physically when we're feeling worried or afraid. They really break down what's happening in great detail, starting with the brain sending messages to different parts of our body. So our eyes, our muscles, our lungs, our stomach, and then going to our heart, our blood, our skin. So all the different areas of the body that our brain is sending messages to when it's feeling overwhelmed with fear or worry. Chapter four, we're going into some skills and strategies and they introduce the worry box. So they tell kids, sometimes it feels as though a worry wants to be around all the time. It's not a good idea to let worry completely take over because it can get in the way of other important things we need to do, like eating, sleeping, doing homework, playing, having fun. We need to be able to take a break from worry. To do that, we need a place to put it. As we get older, we learn to put things in imaginary sections in our mind to come back to later. While we learn to do this, it can help to make a real place to keep our worry. And this is the worry box. So it has instructions on making and decorating your own worry box. And basically, the idea is that anytime your child has a worry or a thought that is scary, they can draw or write it on a piece of paper and put it inside their worry box and set it to the side until they have time to really deal with the worry or to talk about that worry with a trusted adult. Here we have sort of a relaxation exercise, working on tightening and relaxing muscles one at a time, different sections of our body. Here they're covering deep belly breathing and they have some really clear instructions on how to do that. making a stress ball, creating a peaceful place in the house where you can go to relax. They also talk a little bit about what they call mindfulness meditation. Um, you could also think of this as just taking some time to be quiet, to close your eyes, and to notice your own thoughts and feelings and the environment around you, just to relax and calm down. Another activity they suggest is making a feeling jar. This is essentially like a sensory jar that's gonna have some glitter or some beads or some sparkles in it, and just sort of give kids something to visually look at while they try to settle down. Then we have a section on taking charge of thoughts. So we have some positive thoughts and then we also have some questions we can ask when negative or scary thoughts enter our minds. And then they have sort of different thoughts scrambled up. So some of these are positive, some of these are negative, and your child should read these and put a check next to the positive one and an X next to the untrue negative thoughts. We have a super helpful outline on how to talk to others about our feelings, our worries, or our needs. And it's very scripted, so kids can really just fill in the blanks here. I feel worried when we go to a new place and I don't know what's going to happen. It would help if you could tell me what to expect. So we're giving our kids that empowering vocabulary. They can explain how they're feeling and they can also be very clear in letting us know what they need that would help them feel better. Here we have a section on being assertive and standing up for ourselves. And there's actually a story here for us to read and then fill out some questions based on the story. Which character was being passive in the story? Two people were acting aggressively. Who were they? So it's a nice little reading and comprehension exercise. And we go into chapter five taking charge of worries about real things. So now we're addressing worries that are actually based in reality. So it talks about naming and addressing the problem head on and then making a list of solutions or potential solutions to that problem. Then we have this really great solution chart. I absolutely love this activity because this is a great way to exercise some critical thinking and give our kids practice in seeing the effects of their actions and choices. So the example problem that they are starting with here is I don't have enough time to finish my homework. That's the problem. 
And so they have some example solutions. If I rush to answer every question, even if it isn't my best job, and then hand in that homework, what are the pros and cons if we decide to go with that choice? The pro is I'll finish all the questions on my homework and get it in on time. But the con is I'll probably get a lower grade than I usually do. It also brings out even if your solution doesn't work or doesn't work the way that you wanted it to, you are still learning every time you try to solve a problem. Now we have another story. And this story is about a girl named Jenny. She has a fear of a real life thing. She is afraid of being around dogs. So we would go through with our child, read this whole story to see how her step-by-step -step plan helps her to deal with this very real fear. And then your child's going to come over here to this list of different steps that Jenny took to solve her problem. And they're going to number them in the order of which she took those steps. We have a list of instructions on coming up with our own step-by-step -step plans to meet a goal or overcome a worry or fear. Chapter 6 is taking charge of my imagination. And so here we're talking about how we really need to train our imagination to go in the direction that we would like it to go. They introduce this concept of a worry buddy. So this is like an imaginary friend that is actually going to stand up to the worry or remind the child how to feel confident and relaxed despite the worry. And so the child would write down, what would your worry buddy say? We have this great exercise here called even though. So even though blank, that doesn't mean blank. Even though we have emergency drills at school, that doesn't mean there will be a real emergency today. Even though my friend is taking a long time to get here, that doesn't mean something bad happened to her. Even though my mom is late picking me up, that doesn't mean she will leave me here forever. Unfortunately, a lot of the worries in this book are related to public school and are not really applicable to us as a homeschool family, but this exercise can be applied to just about any real life worry. Another exercise is draw the scary thing and then change it. So you're the director of this movie, you're in charge of your own mind and your own imagination, so you can change it, you can flip the script. It also encourages them to become an expert on their fear. So if they're really afraid of bugs or dogs, why not learn everything they can about that and feel empowered with that knowledge? Another exercise is to dress up as your fear or to draw your fear and then make it silly. They encourage the child to share and celebrate their success. And then we have our final chapter, Remembering and Staying Motivated. It talks about using a mental scale from 0 to 10 to sort of measure our worry level at any given time and just kind of check in with ourselves. And then it sort of summarizes some key points that we've learned through this book that we need to remember. The last one we will look at is the Worry Workbook. Remember, this is the only book that is not written by a doctor, but it is peer-reviewed by a clinical psychologist or a child psychologist. This is also the only book that has any color in it. Here in our table of contents, you'll notice that it's not really arranged in chapters as much as sort of themed topic areas. So we have this introduction section under hello that introduces what is worrying all about, how worry affects your body. Then we have an I love myself section. So we're going to cover self-talk, listening to our thoughts, things we can't control, an I'm proud to be me section, a happy time section, which is quite long. And these are where the majority of our exercises are going to be. I feel calm and happy. A couple more exercises and tools are introduced. Calm is my superpower, my worry shrinker. I can do it. And we have the conclusion at the end. It seems like this book is geared towards kids using it more independently. In the introduction for parents and caregivers, it says, you know your child best. So you might choose to work with them on the activities. 
but be careful not to influence their responses. So we want whatever they're writing or saying to come from themselves. It talks about how the best way we can support our kids is through active listening and then paraphrasing what they've expressed back to them. So showing that we're really trying to make an effort to understand where they're coming from and empathize with them. The book starts off by having a list of questions for your child to ask themselves. And it says, if you're nodding your head while reading this list, then you've come to the right place. It's time to dive in and find a way to beat your worries with some fun challenges and activities. So first, draw and name three trusted adults that we can talk about our worries with. Again, this book goes over the three Fs, fight, flight, and freeze. And then it gives some example scenarios and presents your child the opportunity to select which of those reactions or responses might be appropriate for that scenario. Then it goes into how worry affects your body. And it introduces the five-day challenge. So this is an opportunity for your kids to do some detective work and to sort of analyze any patterns in how they're feeling over a period of five days. In this activity, they have a jar of jelly beans. And on each of these, they're going to try to write an emotion or a feeling, either positive or negative. We have some coloring, another activity prompt here, a self-talk exercise. I really appreciated this. It says, this is such an important life lesson, so pay attention. Our thoughts equal how we feel, which equals how we behave. And then it introduces this idea of the worry cabinet. This is really similar to the worry box that we saw in the previous book. It's giving your kids an opportunity to write down some of their biggest repetitive worries on this cabinet. And we have the symbol here that shows this is a good opportunity to work with your parent or grown up or caregiver. Then it says once you have your cabinet all filled, it's time to declutter it. Get rid of worries that you can't control. There's a fun little activity where they can write their worry on the coaster under the fizzy drink. And then in each of these bubbles, they can write down how that worry or situation is making them feel. All throughout the book, we have these little reminders to bring in an adult to help continue the conversation on whatever they are reading about in the book. This is a section for positive self-talk. There's a mirror here where they can list compliments for themselves. Now we have a new five-day challenge. They're writing their negative thoughts that they've had on each of those days. And then it encourages them, with the help of a parent or grown-up, to rephrase their negative thoughts into a positive voice. We have this great section on how our brain grows and develops and forms new neural pathways. Every time we do something new or try something and fail or overcome a challenge, and there's a great little activity to go along with that. Here, we're introducing a scribble diary. This is a really great place to start with a diary or a journal system. Here we have this chart with Monday through Sunday, and it encourages the kiddo to just write one word or feeling. Or maybe for your kiddo who's extra young, maybe they're just putting a sticker with a certain emoji that expresses a certain feeling, or they're just drawing a little picture that expresses a certain feeling on what their overwhelming feeling was for that day. Here's an activity for making their own fidget spinner. Here we're talking about physical exercise and how that can help to release excess adrenaline. We have some stretching exercises here, a way for your child to track their activity. And then we start getting into some mindfulness exercises. So sitting in a quiet, comfortable place and focusing only on what you see or hear or smell or touch. Here we have some breathing exercises and it's very playfully illustrated on balloons for us. This exercise is kind of fun. It talks about practicing mindfulness during a family meal. So really slowing down the process of taking a bite. It calls it a mindful morsel. 
before you take your first bite, have a good look at it, smell it, maybe give it a prod with your tongue, then place it in your mouth and slowly chew. Notice how it feels. Is it hot or cold? What kind of texture does it have? And finally, how does it taste? This can be a fun way to start talking at the dinner table. Who can come up with the best descriptive words for their mindful morsel? And we have, you're not a worrier, you're a warrior. So we have some empowering ideas here for getting control over our own thoughts. They do introduce a gratitude journal, which I think most of us will be familiar with at least the concept of that. It talks about how scientific studies show that practicing gratitude makes you feel happier. And this is true for adults and children. So this might be a great opportunity to start having gratitude journal time together. This is a fun activity where your child can write their favorite words that make them feel really calm or happy on these kites. Here they're talking about the importance of laughter and we are reiterating that point with some very silly jokes. Here's a prompt for your child to make their own cartoon strip of some funny things that have happened to them in their real life. And then we talk about sleep, the importance of sleep. And it offers some suggestions on how we can prioritize sleep, like getting to bed at the same time every night, having a nice relaxing routine before bed, keeping away from screens before bed. And then it also talks about how many hours of sleep our 8 to 12 year old typically needs. Here's an opportunity for your child to design their own dream bedroom. And I really appreciate the little tips in these bubbles. It informs them why these various things in their room are important. Counting sheep to help you fall asleep. We also have a few little puzzles here. And then we have kind of a summary of some different techniques that we've learned in dealing with our worries and some blank worksheets here where your child can fill in specific worries and then on the petals of each of these flowers, draw all of the things they can do to make that worry smaller or to make it disappear. Here is a three day what if challenge. So they jot down these scenarios that they're worried about on each respective day. And then they would put a check if that thing actually happened or an X if it did not happen. And so this again is just kind of helping them notice some patterns. Here's an opportunity for them to jot down all of their favorite exercises, methods, strategies that they've learned on a list and actually cut this out of the book so that they can have it with them at all times. And then we have our conclusion with some nice positive affirmations. We have an answer key for our puzzles and a final summary for parents and caregivers. So I'd love to hear from you guys. What do you think about these workbooks? And do you think any of these might be a good fit for your child or your family? Thank you so much for spending a little bit of your very valuable time with me. I so appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments or would like to chat more, I am always available in the comment section here on YouTube or over on my Instagram. Feel free to DM me and reach out. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.